All right, so that is our motivation for coming out to our people. Why? Because that's love. That is love. But remember what God said. Does, does God love the sinner and hate the sin? He said, do God love the sinner? Uh-huh, and hate the sin? Remember, they say that in Christianity, right? Is that true? Right, the, the question is, does God hate, excuse me, does that God love the sinner but hate the sin? You ever heard that before? Probably have. Right? They, they say that all the time in Christianity. But is that a thing according to the Bible? We gonna see. Read. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 12 and verse 6. Yeah. For the most high hateth sinners. He what? Hateth sinners. So this scripture right here, that the Christian church hardly, well, they, they never bring out. Right? They never bring out scriptures like this. The, the, the Bible says God hates sinners. He hates sinners. This is why we come out and we tell our, our brothers and our sisters, hey, we got to stop sinning. Because God hates you when you sin. He's going to continue to hate you up until your point of repentance if you ever do. Right? And you definitely do not want to die in your sins because you're going to really understand how much he hates you then. Right? So this is the reason. This is another motivation on top of loving your people, right? Showing, letting your, your light so shine. God hates you when you do not keep the commandments. Right? Give me uh, Proverbs chapter 8. Yeah, go ahead, finish that up. Take it up, Proverbs. For the most high hated sinners uh -huh. and will repay vengeance unto the ungodly. He will repay vengeance to the ungodly. So you are ungodly if you're living in sin. All right? So. Keep God's commandments for your own good. Keep it for your family's good. Because not only do you teach, like how, how we doing today, we're, we're teaching you by the word, but you teach by your example as well. Right. Especially if you love your, you, you, you know, claim to love your family. Right? Love your family by teaching them God's word and also by your example. All right? Read that. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 8 and verse 17. You know. I love them. That love me. You hear that? Read it again. I love them that love me. So God says, I love all of those Israelites, all of my chosen people that love me. Remember, he created us, the Israelites, right, to be above the other nations. But he's, we still have to keep his commandments excuse me, in order for him to love us. Right, so it's not just the, okay, I'm chosen. You know, I can be out here in these streets. I'm a, I'm a gangster, but I'm an Israelite. I'm a stripper, but I'm an Israelite. I'm on OnlyFans, but I'm an Israelite. God, it don't work like that. If you're an Israelite, you're a God's chosen people, you know you're royalty, guess what? That is the standard way of life for you. Right, so God's laws, statutes, and commandments is what we must uphold. We, we have to do that, right? Because when you are royalty, you live at that upper level of standard compared to the rest of the people, right? So so that contradicts the mindset of our people today. There's a lot of women, our, our sisters, they say all the time, I'm a queen, I'm a queen, but you're living like a hood, right? What, what sense does that make? Do queens, does royalty dress like that? Is it so easy for me to see your shape as a as a as a queen it's not so if you are a queen if, if you are a princess if if you are truly royalty and you really believe that you're gonna hold yourself to that standard that is what god is telling us to do as a people you you must hold yourself to that standard all right we don't those that seek me early those that what that seek me early that seek me early you know what that means that don't delay, right? You know you're an Israelite, you heard about it, all praises to the Most High for that. But continue your journey, find out how you can serve the more, uh, serve the Lord more and more right. in your life, right? We gotta get our friendships, we gotta keep this Sabbath day holy, we must congregate. We gotta do that often, all right? No buying and selling today, no no stealing if you if you a thief. Right? Matter of fact, give me a hold that. Hold that. Let's get a Corinthians. 
Let's get another law you can keep right now. A, 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 another law you can fix right now. All right? Corinthians 11, start at verse 3. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11 and verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Oh, so, so he already know. Hey, look, all praise to the Most High, bro. All praise to the Most High. He already knew what I was doing. Hey, you, hey, that's, that's beautiful right there. Right? It should be that easy every time. You got, look, look, I'm not even mad at you. You got a meek spirit on you. Keep that. Right? Grow, grow that spirit right there. All praise to the Most High. Read on. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. So the order, the natural order, Most High God, Christ, man, woman, children. Read on. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Right? So, so as you know, right? So when the word is coming out, when we are prophesying according to the Bible, letting our people not only know who they are according to the Bible, but letting them know we, we must keep God's commandments. Right. That is prophesying according to the Bible. Right? right? That's a form of, of prayer. Right? So we must have our heads uncovered as men, you know, when uh when scriptures is going out, right? And the women are su supposed to cover up their heads. All right? So that's something spiritual. You already know that. All praises. Just just to remind you as your brother. And that's love right there. Right? So let me ask you about your diet. Do you eat pork at all? No. You don't eat no pork? You don't eat no shrimp, no crab, no lobster, no none of that. None of that. All praises. What about your house? Do you have a wife? Yes. She right there. Oh, she, she right over there. Hey, Shalom, since Mosiah Christ blessed. Does she does she wear a dress? She got the dress on. Hey, look, y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all y'all gonna come congregate with us? coming to an end our, our people we don't realize that that's why they still buying and selling today that's why they still breaking God's commandments that's why they still thugs out here that's why our sisters still dress the way they do because they don't know what's coming but we know what's coming right read this is the book of Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 1 bring it out gather yourselves together yeah. gather together O nation not desire we are that nation not desire we are God's chosen people and and with that with that title comes extreme hatred for from everyone else because we're the only ones that's able to be right with God right so we have to rely on one another we have to come together as a people because what did they do to us as a people? They destroyed us. Give me that, Hosea. Hosea, they destroyed us. And they, they continue to perpetuate that destructive mindset that keeps us here. Keeps us here in this low state. They don't want us to come together and start building as a people. They don't want you to, to be a leader, not only to your family, but to your nation. They don't want that. They want us to stay, stay their slaves. Stay on the bottom. Stay relying on them. They want that forever. But that's not what God wants. God wants everything to be in reverse. Because that's how he set it up. Right? Hosea 4, verse 6. Oh, excuse me. Uh, what's that? Uh, 4 and 6, right? Yes, sir. Go ahead, Rick. It's the book 
of Hosea, chapter 4 and verse 6. Bring it out. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So that's the so-called blacks, so-called Hispanics, so-called Native American Indians. You are God's chosen people. But guess what? We are destroyed mentally. We are destroyed for lack of knowledge. What is that knowledge? God's laws, his statutes, his commandments, who you are as a people, right? You are destroyed if you call yourself a black man. Black is a color. There's no land that's called black. You cannot travel to the land of black. Japanese people, they live in Japan. Chinese people, they live in China. The so-called white man, the Caucasian man, lives in the lands that he stole, but they originate in the Caucasus Mountains, right? That is that is their uh, original habitation. But black people, right, we call ourselves black. Where's the land of black? It's nowhere. We are the Israelites. We must come back to it in, in every fashion, right? Read on. Because the... Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Now give me Proverbs chapter 1. So we as a people, we have rejected that knowledge. And we continue to reject that knowledge every day. Every single day. And, and we, we, we joyfully get up and go uh, rely on the white man's payments for survival. God gave us this whole world. You're supposed to be ruling over people right now. But we get up every day, every single day, to go work for another man. You are God, but you work for this, this peasant. How does that work? That don't make no sense. Ye are gods. My chosen people, you are elites. You should not be relying on these other nations. But, but, because you are stiff-necked and rebellious, I'm going to humble your ass. Right. That's what God says. I'm going to humble your, your black behind. I'm going to put you on punishment. And we're, we are currently living in a time of grace. That is mercy from God. Because he could have just put us all to death and just left it as that. All right. They, they want to be rebellious? Kill them all. I'm going to act like I ain't never did none of this, period. And I'm going to be up in my heavens living it up getting glorified every day but now we're here we have this opportunity to get back right with the most high God right read this is the book of Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 22 how long ye simple ones so God says how long you simple ones it's still talking about his chosen people but he's calling us simple ones why we are destroyed today for our lack of knowledge. So the more and more we lack wisdom and knowledge, the more simple we are. That's why you see our brothers out here sagging they, uh, they pants off. That's why you, you see our sisters out here dressing the way they do. We are simple-minded today. We lack God in our lives. We lack structure and order. Right? How long, you simple ones? Read on. How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? And we love that simplicity. We love it. We enjoy it. It's pleasurable to us. Right? All of that, we, we deem that as fun. Us dressing like that, that's, that's fun. That's pleasurable to us. We like doing that. We like getting the, the attention from it. Right? Our sisters, they love getting that sexual attention. They don't want a man to look at them as more than just some some ass, right? They, they want to get that sexual attention. So they're going, a lot of them, unless they repent, they're going to continue to dress like that up until they die. You got grown women, you got older women, women in their 40s, women in their 50s, 60s, dressing like some of these 21 year olds, some, dressing like some of these 18 year olds. How long, ye simple ones, shall ye love simplicity? Right? Read on. And scorners delight in their scorning. And when we come out, we tell them to keep God's commandments. Why? So we can get this kingdom. They laugh at us. They scorn us. 
They reject God's words. Right? That's the mindset of us. Read. And fools hate knowledge. Who hates knowledge? Fools hate knowledge. So guess what? If you're not keeping God's commandments, right, and you have no, no, uh, no point at all to repent, God is calling you a fool. Right, right. And guess what's going to happen to those fools? They're going to be burnt up. They ain't going to be here no more. It's going to be like they never existed. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. 